test one two three. Hello boys and girls. Uh, it's a quick video tutorial. Uh, tips and tricks about using Z spheres in ZBrush for R six. Um, what you see on the screen at the moment is the final result. Uh, the speed spit sculpt topic for today is Star Wars, so I'm going for Watto. Interesting character, and this is uh, basically just the Z sphere setup for Watto. Watto. Okay, and uh, you can probably see uh, I've heavily customized my uh, layout here. For ZBrush, so on the left hand side, I've uh, pretty much made a whole new, brand new menu for uh, all the useful stuff that I, uh, I tend to use all the time. Uh, got one for masking, one for stroke, mirroring, and brush mods. And down here, I've got all the different lighting set up. And of course, down the bottom, we've got all the different brushes. When you go into ZBrush, you want to choose Z Sphere. And the size of the Z Sphere, you, if you turn on the floor, you generally don't want to make it too small or too large. So this is about right. Um, I know what like, ZBrush doesn't have a scale, really doesn't have a world scale. But uh, it does depend on the scale of the floor on some brushes. So what I tend to, what I like to do is just make sure that yeah the the uh, the character sits in the middle. Start from the x-axis, and generally the first Z sphere, which is this one, uh, you want to basically use that as the the pelvis, the central uh, central. Movement, uh, which will stay sort of stationary, um, and then you build out your torso from there. So as you can see, uh, we've got two setup, two Z spheres just created, and to create the Z spheres or to draw, you can either use these: draw, move, scale, rotate. I, when I use Z spheres, I make sure that. Uh, yeah, I use the keyboard shortcut, which is Q, W, E, and R. Uh, it makes it, it makes it really, really fast if you know the shortcuts instead of going up here you know, and clicking all the time, because you will be doing quite a lot of moving around uh, the Z spheres. So make sure one other thing is make sure you have the symmetry on on the X axis, because if you don't, uh, the topology of the uh, adaptive skin after you make the Z spheres uh, will be not mirrored and you'll have problems when you start sculpting. So make sure symmetry is on and we're going to start drawing. So if symmetry is on, oops, sorry, you'll see if you just wanted to add one right in the middle, it'll turn green. But if you wanted to add two, it would be just red. Okay. So, there, there, and I've got drawn, now I'm just going to move it. Moving the Z spheres is uh, quite easy. Uh, there's basically two things you need to remember. If you click on the actual little circle itself, within the middle of the z-sphere, it will move just that z-sphere and anything attached to it, but if you click on the middle bit with a rotate on, it will give a different rotation, so let's do this I'll show you what I mean so if I click this and move back and forth But let's say I click this, it actually rotate on the center pivot. So if you rotate from the middle, 
of the z-sphere it will rotate from the center but then you can also click on the bone or join itself and it's going to rotate this way which is handy and there's the z-sphere I'm just going to step through and I generally like to do start off with the torso and then do the arms and then the hands so fingers are great to do with z-spheres because you can get really nice topology and bands with fingers uh, just duplicate this so I don't undo the overwrite the undo's So generally you start off with the palm and then one the big z-sphere for the first joint and then another one so drawing and then moving this out and one tip to do uh, to remember with z-spheres is uh, it, it's always easier to go straight out first then to let's say do it this way because you'll find when you're pulling uh, doing bit by uh, joint by joint um, you'll find the direction may not be you know straight so what I like to do is make sure I do one long one first in the direction it's going and then what you do is with uh, draw mode on you click in the middle where you want the extra joint and switch to move and, then move it up. and you'll find that this is going to be nice and straight You're not going to have any strange bends in there okay. let's go back so I'm just moving all the z-spheres into shape adjusting the overall forms so I decided with what I since it's got sort of a uh, bulge here in the wrist in the forearm uh, gave him another z-sphere here just bulge it out and then we've got the head start with the neck and it's always useful when you're after you've drawn it and you're adjusting the forms to go into side view make sure that it's looking nice and interesting on the side as well and not just the front so with what I uh, with the head what, the, what I generally do is just, just that um, later on I'll show you how we start sculpting how to make sure that we have enough topology there uh, but with what I he's got a nose so we added a nose as well and then adjusting his pose a bit more making sure his shape is nice doing his legs Toes. So same sort of deal. One straight up, and then adding the joints in there. And ah, oh, okay. With scale, quite useful. I'll just show you what happens when you change the mode to scale mode. If you click on the joint itself, it's going to scale like that. So it's just going to scale the joint, but everything else in touch won't get scaled. But if you click on the circle itself, as well, I'm clicking in the circle in the actual center of the Z sphere, it's going to scale just that, just the joint. 
this one, it's got the joint. But quite useful when you want to start adjusting different things. Let's go back. Just doing his wings. So I did one main one, switch them back actually. So one main one. Then I'm adding where the joints are going to pop out. And all this time I'm using the keyboard shortcut, which is Q, W, E, and R. And if you have a look at the wings, if I switch to rotation mode, okay, so if I click on the center circle and rotate, but if I click on the joint itself that's what's going to happen so just remember clicking on the joint and clicking on the center of the z-sphere will give you different results on the scale and the rotation and the move okay and that's about it really oh. And one last important thing about when you're creating Z-Spheres, what I generally do is check the adaptive skin while I'm making the Z-Spheres. And you do that by simply pressing A on your keyboard. And that's going to give you a preview of the mesh that it's going to generate. If you hit the poly, the poly frame uh, option, it's going to show you all the poly groups that it's going to generate. So, uh, you can see the, the polygroups are created when you create a new joint. Right. So, let's say you wanted a few more polygroups in the arm for whatever reason. We've just created a few polygroups. This is really useful later on when we start making like cloth and things like that. We start spreading out the polygroups. Anyway, go back. So while I'm doing the uh, making the Z spheres, I always switch back and forth by pressing A, toggle A, just to make sure that the topology isn't going crazy or anything like that. Because sometimes, uh, if you notice, like. Here's an example. If you notice like a ghost thing happening here in your Z-Sphere mode, it's an indication that uh, there might be quite a lot of pinching going on. Um, and sometimes, you know, the topology will actually break. So just make sure when you see that, just switch on A and make sure that the topology is actually okay. And in this case, it's fine. Right? It's just, that's actually where we want the pinch to happen in the legs. So. Uh, there you go, there's the uh, Z-Sphere setup for Watto. So once you're done, you're happy with the Z-Sphere and the uh, pre skin preview looks okay. You need to go down to the Adaptive Skin section and set your density to 2. You don't really want to preview on density 1, it's, that's really, really low res. So number 2. And the other settings, I believe they're just default settings. I don't have classic skinning turned on. And once you're happy with it, click Make Adaptive Skin. Just go right up to the top, and you'll see in the Tools section you have a new tool called Z uh, Skin Z Sphere Five, whatever. Uh, and that's going to be uh, what you start sculpting on. So this this will be a live. Polymesh 3D, which you can start sculpting on. Okay, turn off that. There you go. All good to go. And you can actually step down to 
the lowest subdiv level, but you know, that's really, really low for speedy speed sculpts. Yeah, you know, you can stay at this level and uh, delete the lower one because the next important thing you want to do is generally what happens is uh, you run a topology on the head. If you look at the polygon distribution, it's fairly even, uh, but the head will contain the most detail. So, what you want to do is actually just increase the polygons uh, on the head itself. So, what you do is a neat little trick, not many people know this. Get ready to have your mind blown. Select the poly groups that you actually want to up res and then all you need to do is mask it unhide the rest and control whoop, and invert your mask and control D and voila so what this is actually doing is uh, adding more subdivisions based on the masking which is uh, we've created the mask just with the polygroup so it's really really useful because everything else is still low res, really useful when you're posing uh, and your head is nice and high res to get the details going. So generally I'll go up another one, divide it twice. And I've got plenty of polygons here to sculpt with. And we can even go up, when we keep going up rest of the body stays relatively low but the head stays nice and high so you have plenty of uh, polygons to sculpt with. It's a really really neat trick and uh, I bet you you didn't know that. Um, uh, so to do that though you need to make sure that you have the frozen subdivision levels before uh, before you do it. So you can't actually have any subdivision subdivision levels uh, to do the uh, the subdivide by masking so make sure you don't have any more subdivs and let's say well okay. so we wanted more polygons here in the chest in the torso mask it invert the mask and where is not mask Control D, it's going to give you more polygons. Yes, very handy. Okay, so I hope that helped. Uh, I know that was a pretty rough <laughs> sort of video, uh, so I did this on the fly. Anyway, enjoy and sculpt on.